Uh, thank you for attending the Place Based Working Update Group. Um, we've got some slides that we're going to be going through and Rachel will be presenting it through. So if I go to your first uh, items on the agenda, do we have any apologies before we go beyond that? I've only received apologies for count from Councillor Cooper. Right, okay. So, do you want to introduce yourself? Because we're having it on audio today, it's not webcast, so okay. if everybody introduces so that people, when they do listen to the audio, they know who's in, in attendance. So, my name's Councillor Cathy Scott. Uh, my name's Alison, uh, Councillor Alison Munray. Uh, Councillor John Taylor. Councillor Will Simpson. Hi, I'm Rachel Spencer Henshaw. Carl Whistlecraft. Hi, I'm Sims. Dina Randawa. And uh, Councillor John Taylor is actually indicating he wants something to say. Just to say that uh, Councillor Michael Watson is actually on holiday, so I'll just give his apologies right. as well. Thank you. Right. Okay then. So, uh, minutes of the last meeting. Can we agree them as a true record? Yeah. Okay. I think there was only myself and you, Councillor Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay then. So now we'll move on to the place based working update. And Rachel Spencer Henshaw will update us on this. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I've got quite a lot of slides to get through, so um, <clears throat> I'm really happy to do it where you ask questions as I go along, if that works for everyone. Um, what I'm trying to do is cover some of the stuff that I've built on when I came last time to talk about place based <coughs> working, which I'm conscious there have only been uh, a number of you in that meeting because obviously the representation has changed. Um, but hopefully um, I've covered the basics so that you can um, <clears throat> get a sense of, of, of the whole kind of agenda. So I'm going to cover the strategic context for place-based working, how it links to the corporate plan. Um, we've had some intelligence from a company called Collaborate who've kind of given us a bit of a diagnostic about where we are with place-based working and what the appetite is. And that's not just within the council, that's across the partnership. Just a reminder about what was agreed at annual council and then how we've moved further in terms of articulating what that means in relation to place partnerships and to give a bit of an update about how we are developing the ward and sub-ward partnerships. Um, and then a bit about how we're getting on with the citizen engagement programme through the place standard. And finally, just a little bit in terms of how as a, an organisation and ideally with our partners we're trying to look at how we coordinate our staff and provide support to make place-based working more effective. So that seem okay as a kind of agenda here? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Carl. So I just put this up, and I apologise for the small writing. Would it, would it be helped to get a copy of the slides now so that you've got them in front of you? It would, actually, yeah. yes. Okay, sure. so I've got you've got some handy casting. Yeah. Thanks. Vina, you want to Sorry, Vina. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I, I quite like this slide because what this is a bit of a, um, a description of, and ignore the arrows, um, it's, if you start in the bottom in terms of I, we have a need, it's, it's the person centred, so it's starting with the individual. What we've kind of said is in, in terms of how we want to design the organisation, how do we best do that to meet the needs of the people out there? So actually there are different lenses that you'd want to look at. So if you start from the outside, the strategy commissioning lens is almost like as an organisation, how do we create the circumstances for Peter to people to better achieve their outcomes and for us to support them with that. And that might be where we set things like council-wide strategies, so let's take something like a domestic abuse strategy, you'd have that across the organisation because that's almost what is the intelligence telling us and what is the um, best evidence in terms of what works to try and improve and prevent domestic abuse. So that's an example. The joined up delivery lens is about actually if we're talking about people who need services, who are on particular pathways, so people that might need um, are in crisis if we take the domestic abuse angle. Actually, how do we, with our partners, work and wrap around that individual and family to make sure they achieve what they need to achieve and we get them into the best situation for, for, for them? But actually, what place-based working is, is almost like, actually, before anybody needs any kind of service necessarily, how are we being more proactive within communities by understanding the strengths and assets within them thinking about where people are on their life journey, 
what are the connections that they're making across with other people within their communities, but also with the voluntary community sector. And critically for me, how ward members are, are um, understanding that community capacity and are able to help the council and its partners direct resources in a better way. And for me, what that does is it takes us much more into a proactive way of working rather than just jumping in when there's a crisis situation. Wait, can I just pick you? Uh, you yeah. said you, it's about understanding your community capacity. Yeah. Capacity in terms of, of volunteering to, to, to get, gain a better, or uh, is that for help, helping others, or is that to gain a better understanding of what's actually going on in the community? I think probably when I'd say community capacity, I suppose it's understanding the community's um, ability, skills and, and strength yeah. to do something, so to contribute within their community. I suppose the only way of understanding community capacity is obviously to have the intelligence around what that is, and that's where community leaders would obviously be able to provide okay. that. That's fine, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so just... Um, a bit reminder about what we've said, why place-based working is important, and I know I've just touched a little bit on this. I think it's very easy sometimes as statutory organisations to believe that we know best, and actually communities are often um, much better placed to know their own challenges and the assets that they have within them. And actually, even though they can't achieve change at all, they need to be part of the solution, not um, passive recipients of one. Um, and when we talk about place-based working, it's, it's how we influence that whole system. So rather than going in with specific services where you're targeting one bit of a person, it might be a finger in one instance, it might be a toe in another, this is how you think about them in a holistic way and try and make sure that actually the support and, and what they're involved in meets all those needs. Um, and how do we bring service provision much closer to the communities and their representatives? Because actually it's very easy, I think, sometimes to sit quite far back from reality and make judgments and decisions about what needs to happen. But unless we're convinced that communities themselves are comfortable with what that service might be, and equally members knowing their communities are able to help articulate that, we're probably end going to end up with a disconnect between what we're saying we're going to do and what people actually genuinely benefit from. Can I ask a question on this, yeah. Rachel? Because um, going through this, where we've got targeting resources and you know and things like that, when a resource is up for review, is this also a vehicle where the voice can be heard and demonstrate why that service is, should be retained? Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely think so. And, and I also would, would go a little bit further and yeah. say, and that could be different in different places. So yeah. it may be that in one area, a service is not needed in the same way because the capacity yeah. is there. But in other areas, it might need, it need that it is. Yeah. But equally, you've got to make sure that's, that's balanced with yeah. equity of outcome because what you don't want to do is create potentially differences in outcome, do you? No. Um, but yeah, I mean, resource decisions, if we're genuinely being intelligence-led, they, they ought to be mm -hmm. sophisticated enough to be not just a one-size-fits-all approach. It needs to be something a bit more nuanced. Yeah. Thank you. Can yeah. I just... Yeah. I mean, Sorry. There is a, there's, there's a... There's a risk to this as well, isn't there? That, um, what you have is, is... And we've seen this a bit in libraries with volunteers coming we in have. to support libraries. We have, yeah. But what you get is, <coughs> if you're not careful, if there's an over-reliance on the capacity where the capacity is, mm -hmm. eventually you get those people that have been providing that support getting disillusioned. Because mm -hmm. all they see is they don't get anything in terms of resources because they're there, mm -hmm. and resources are going elsewhere. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to be aware of that danger Fun, of... If we do pull back in an area because the community is deemed to have capacity, there's a risk that you demotivate that, that community because mm -hmm. they feel like they're not getting any help or support. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, 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 when you talk about assets in your community, it's your volunteers who are your assets. They <coughs> are the main asset. Uh, because without volunteers, you actually can't do anything. Uh, and it's, it's how are you going to get them to engage in the community because so many people work and they're so busy. And the, you talk about people with different skills who can contribute, but... It may, you know, while they, while you know, everybody has different skills, it may be that they're not available to contribute in the way that we want them to. So, for me, it's all about engagement and getting them 
mm. involved in the community to, to actually co contribute in some way. I think but that's why it's key, the councillor and community leaders. Uh, did you indicate, well, did you want no, to no, say no. that? I think it's about the community leaders also taking that responsibility as well. Because for me, volunteers are like gold dust. Exactly. But they don't always stop because they excel in going to other careers or, you know, sometimes it's just a stopping point for them to get themselves into yeah. a place. So for me, it works in partnership, this, um, particularly with mental health, because a lot of people come into groups, you know, for that support mechanism and then move on. But I, th I, I think this, this whole plan of <coughs> place-based working is fantastic because we're going to get the actual intelligence of each area where people will take the ownership where they come. So particularly on streets, because in my ward, it can be based by a couple of streets that that is the Bylaw area, this is the Els Eaton area, this is the Angin Eaton, and it's just a couple of streets away from each other, but they are Jews Brees, but there's that little bit they can earn. So. Sorry, John. No, no, I was just going to add, and I think the other, the other thing we need to be mindful of this is, that thing that we talked about Mm. is putting communities representatives at the heart of design and delivery. Yeah. We need to recognise that in doing that, sometimes the answers we get from the community and their representatives may differ from the strategy we originally set out. Yeah. Or even, you know, the, just you know, bringing a bit of politics into it, the, 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 the ambitions of the administration. So we just need to recognise that there is going to be that tension that we somehow need to work our way through. And I guess it, it's literally going to be, we'll just have to work our way through it. I don't even <coughs> guess yeah. how that's going to yeah. turn out. Mm. But I think there is a, there is there must be at some point there will be a, a mismatch. And it's yeah. how we deal with that will mm. be key to how we make this succeed, mm. really. Mm. I think, sorry. Because no, sometimes it's based on service and building. Now, is it the service you need or the building mm. you need? Mm. Yeah, but the service can be lifted and put anywhere building, you know, so you've got a lot of that going on. So. Yeah. Okay, I think just a point about the volunteers, which I think is an important one, I think it's really, I think that sometimes, um, you know, organisations are guilty of <coughs> doing an assessment of capacity within an area and saying, right, they've got loads of capacity, and then disappear off and go somewhere else. And actually, it's, it's a relationship that has to be a long-term one, doesn't it? Because yeah. you're right. Volunteers may withdraw, and mm. you can't assume that they're a static, a static mm. set of resource that doesn't change because the, their mm. motivation for being involved is very different from yeah. somebody who's going to work and getting paid. So, I think that the, the way this will be a success over just being a different way to cut the cake is how that ongoing relationship does understand where things are shifting and actually things <coughs> happen that your cohort of volunteers is going to change. In which case, we need to be much much more quicker at responding mm. to that so that the whole system doesn't fall over. Actually, I've got a question here. You're talking about capacity of, of volunteers. I mean, the problem is, I mean, we don't know how many volunteers are needed for a, for a, to to um, in, a, enable the, you know, a specific service to be delivered. Um, so, because, uh, you know, from my experience um, dealing with local groups, you only ever get a handful of volunteers in any specific group. We can agree with you. Yeah? And so, for me... Um, it's and it's about engagement. Actually, it's about getting those more volunteers and and how many are we going to need for you know to be able to deliver a service. I think, I think it's that's well, really. I think just to build on that, Alison, I think what you also find is most volunteers. If you scratch the surface, you'll find a volunteer in one one place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you know you have that that as well. Mm -hmm. I, th I think when you're talking about services and different designs and things that we're doing, people dip in and out of things as and when they need it. Mm -hmm. It was a bit like the TRAs in the estate. Mm -hmm. There was a near issue that faced them. They'd come, people would dip in to that issue and then disappear. So it's about, understand, it's like a rolling action plan, this. Yeah. So. Okay, Rachel. Okay. Um, did it move? about this but just in terms of again what it means to us place-based working and I, I suppose the big caveat on this is this might make sense to um, me um, it might make sense to you guys but whether it makes sense to people out there I think that's unlikely um, but 
part of this journey is about how we get staff to think differently as well as it is in terms of what people receive out there. So I think we've got some work to do in terms of what our narrative is on place-based working so that people feel more comfortable with. And obviously using things like information, intelligence, insight, best outcomes, it is quite officer speak and I think we need to move away from that. Mm -hmm. but, but just to bid the, the caveat that this is more about our our working document rather than how we're then going to communicate it out because obviously that would be something we wouldn't do without talking to um, local elected members because obviously you know your communities better in terms of how we can communicate with them more effectively but what that does is it talks about how we're going to end up here with one, one size does not fit all so solutions will be taken down to the micro level to try and exactly your point that might be different to a strategy. I mean a really good example for me is, you know, I get sent through the stats for childhood obesity and it tells me that in one of the wards it's like 25% of um, uh, five year olds are, are obese and you're like, oh, that's shocking. But, you know, you talk to the, that community and actually they're saying, well we don't want you to sort out our obesity, we want you to help us create um, spaces that we can go and, and be be with our friends and be active in. Now the obesity might come down in, I don't know, 20 years time, but in reality it's easy to sometimes inflict what we think is the issue in an area onto yeah. a community when in, re when in, in actual fact people don't change behaviour because you tell them they need to change their behaviour. They change their behaviour because their life, the, 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 create, the circumstances are being created for them to do that easily. So. Sometimes what we think are priorities in an area might not be what the community is saying are important to them and how you get that sweet spot between those two things. And it might be more about it being a shorter term or a longer term solution. But it's not easy, put it that way. Okay? Just, no, just on that, oh, yeah, sorry. on that slide, I think the third paragraph there. Um, <clears throat> I have worries about how we define places. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't agree with the current setup with the um, seven areas that we've defined for the place partnerships. There, there wasn't any engagement with local members around defining those, and there are a number of them across Kirkreath, including my own, where I don't feel we've got that right. Um, and my worry is all we've done is imposed another footprint on top of about 20 other footprints that exist across Kirkreath. And really what we need to be doing is taking a step back and going, how do we identify the right geographies for all of our all of our services and our partnerships, ones that people will identify with and can understand and is local enough to reflect that diversity of need. Um, and I don't we I, I don't think we've got that right yet. And I'm not actually sure what work we're doing try and make it better, if anything. I've got a slide on geography actually which I'll, I'll, I'll come on to because I think it's important to raise that if that's mm. all right. Yeah that's absolutely fine because for the point of the audio I was going to say what actually the areas were but we have got the slide <coughs> further on so we'll bring it up at that point. So, um, so what place-based working means in practice? Um, how we bring multi-agency teams together around a place, and again, um, caveat on what that word means in terms of the definition of place, where they share their knowledge and skills. So you move a little bit out of the territory where people are one profession, one sp specific skill set, and you help people to get a little bit more rounded in terms of the skills that they have. How we work best in the best interest of the community and the people, not the organisations. So that's about make, when we've got conflicting priorities from, for example, CCGs or from um, uh, whoever it might be in terms of partnerships within that area. How do we work more from the community up rather than our own organisational priorities? Um, having different conversations, so moving away from consultation, which ought to be um, something we only do in extreme circumstances, and have an ongoing relationship and dialogue, dialogue with communities. Um, how do we create the conditions for, for people to be able to help themselves rather than being recipients of things and if they've got um, a desire to be um, part of their own solutions? And how do we maximise every interaction, every contact counts, and I'm not sure necessarily, um, as statutory organisations, we can see beyond the job we're doing into actually how we can genuinely make that interaction count because 
that person is not just the job you're providing, they are much more uh, holistic than that, aren't they? So that'll take a cultural change as well Massive. within the organisation. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's just a cultural change in the organisation mm. either. Um, we have certain parts of our communities that have a, have a history of expecting things to be done for them and somehow we've got to change that round as well so they, they recognise that you know there are people there to support them but not to do everything for them. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you what, in what terms of what what kind of help you support the new? Literally, they they will go to their council with anything they have if they need anything, um, rather than try and resolve any of it themselves. <coughs> and we'll have an expectation for councillors are there to to almost be, you know, do their bidding for them. Yeah. It's that type of thing. And what and what and Rachel, what do you, do you mind asking what you what you mean by um, the approach to supporting people to help themselves? Is is it is is that in, in what are you referring? What does that refer to in just in general terms, it, or is this something specific? You could give me an example. I can give you some examples. Okay, great. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose, uh, and again, I'm, apologies for doing more of a, a, a public health example, but it's probably um, yeah, that's, really, that's, that's what it's about. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. See, because I'm a sit on adult health and social care, and I know obviously we've had lots of presentations. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I mean, it could be. It could, so, say for example, you were um, your partner. You were caring for your partner, and your partner needed um, probably a level of um, social care support. Right. Yeah. The difference would, to me would be um, we could just give them a, a standard package of care that we give to everybody that mm -hmm. doesn't take account of actually their genuine circumstances, and it doesn't take account of what might be available in the community to support them. Mm -hmm. But things like personalised budgets is a way of saying, well, you've got this set of money that you can do what you need to with, mm -hmm. and actually what best would meet your outcomes. And it might be very different to what we would prescribe. Equally, things like um, we've come from quite a traditional sense of saying to someone, right, you're a smoker, you need to access a stop smoking service and it does this thing. Mm -hmm. Or you're overweight, you need to go on a diet and it will, you will do this. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you have a conversation with someone and say, well, what, how do you feel? What, what would motivate you to change your behaviour? It might be, well, I want to continue smoking 40 a day, but I'd like to be able to get out and have a walk once a day. And actually, is that a reasonable goal for that person because they're more likely to achieve it than something that might make... Um, somebody think, oh no, well they've got to stop smoking before they do anything so, else. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're kind of looking at this as a, a way of, the, of simple things like of cutting them out from, from perhaps going to the doctor's surgery, so perhaps going to their local centre, their home in the village and getting well, information. In that example, yeah. self-care is a, a, yeah. a big, but taking Councillor Taylor's point, there's also things where you know, people will come to the to the council's front door with mm -hmm. every problem, oh, yeah. which doesn't actually give mm -hmm. them any role or responsibility in that. So, what mm -hmm. what makes a good citizen and an active citizen mm -hmm. and being part of their community, mm -hmm. which might be mm -hmm. that they are more likely to say, "I'm going to look out on the neighbour over there because I think that I'm seeing them for a few days and I want to make sure they're all right." Mm -hmm. Right through to let's run a street party to try and build a bit of community capacity and and, and that. You know, if if nobody does any of that, the, the expectation is that someone will step in and do that for them, and and it's how you shift that. Mm. But you only shift that by helping to create the conditions where that that's that can be done and be supported. But it's a really good opportunity for mapping resources within the communities to see what actually is there, because they're socially isolated. Mm -hmm. They might want to. That they, they don't like going out, but there might be an interest they've got, and it's mapping that and supporting them. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so if we just move on to geography, and, and Councillor Taylor's obviously already so raised it. Um, I mean, what we can say is that organisational boundaries don't make sense to people in terms of where they live. It doesn't matter how we put the cake, they don't mean anything to them largely. Um, and actually, Kirklees is very diverse, and that's, that's hugely positive in terms of, of um, the assets, but it does make it hard to define. Um, Council's ward, council wards are obviously um, you know, the, the building blocks of council governance. So we have to understand how they fit in whatever answer that we give. Do you want to move on? Um, 
And then, you know, we've touched on this in terms of we've got nine primary care um, networks across the district, and we've got um, four what we've termed as early intervention and prevention hubs. Um, and it, it's very easy to get um, very confused and very tied up in geographies. Um, and I think the point that, that um, Councillor Taylor made earlier around what is a meaningful geography to a person would be very different to what, really what we could cut. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we've necessarily got the right answer on this yet, but for me, I think we can, we can do... It's important to separate out how um, agencies are working together on a footprint that makes sense for how they coordinate their staff, which actually shouldn't really make... A, it shouldn't make be visible in terms yeah. of the community, but equally that um, whatever somebody is involved in, receives or is part of, isn't affected by where they're, they're living. So we just need to make sure that we, we're sort of balancing where we're managing staff effectively, but where we've got geographies that we make some sense. And I think the place partnerships, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, on the seven, is a way of cutting the cake, as is many ways of cutting the cake, but whether it's the right way we, we remains to be seen in terms of how we evaluate it over mm -hmm. the next 12 months. Um, but I, I'm not sure anybody's necessarily got this entirely right in terms of how they've, they've done place-based working. But for me, the positive about what we're doing here in Kirklees is that we're saying that actually you don't, it doesn't have to be a ward. It can be a sub-ward um, mm. partnership if that is what makes sense for, you, for the community. So it might be that, I don't know, in Council Scott's example, it, will, it would be... Chickenly might be a community and we'll never change that, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, otherwise, um, that, where, what wall that fits in is less relevant, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can I just ask yeah. a question about the nine, because I'm, I'm not very close to the, the integrated health, health mm. and social care offer, <clears throat> but the nine clusters, Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a worry that in my ward, I have two villages that are served by Wakefield, so... Where will they sit? Um, because their their surgery that they go to is in Middlestown in, in Wakefield. Yeah. This is Flockton and Grange yeah. Moor. So I don't know whether they fit in any of those nine clusters. My they, they probably well they probably don't. And the reason for that is that about if if you compare the census to the GP registered practice population, there's about seventy thousand drift. So that basically means that. We'll have some patients that are on our GP practice registers who live in out of Kirkland's and vice versa, as per your example. They will be part of some kind of primary care network, but it will be probably a Wakefield primary care network. So the reason I, I raised that question is it, it is one of the issues, um, and I know I've picked up the issue over in, over in Dewsbury as well, where they've been, they've been um, on, on the borders of Dewsbury and Osset. Yeah. Um, where some services are delivered by the NHS, in this case, in Wakefield, mm -hmm. but then the social care element will come from Kirklees. Yeah. Yeah. So I think where you've got the boundaries of the district, mm -hmm. there are issues around how we make sure that we're picking those people up properly and supporting them properly, because they, they kind of fall between the two stools occasionally. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, isn't it about the service them actually accessing that, having that service, ensuring they've got the service. Yeah. The service will be delivered. Well, no, no so that's No problem. matter what. No, that's the problem. When you talk about integrated health and social care, it isn't because the health care is delivered by the primary care yeah. and they're going, social care, nothing to do with us. Because they're care residents. I didn't think it... I didn't think it was. If it was a boundary, whichever boundary they fell on, they would receive that service. Am I right, Rachel? I think it's probably a bit of both, actually, because I think that they will always receive a service, that's, that's no mm -hmm. question, but so. if you're talking <coughs> about integrated health and social care, the risk is that if you, if you live in Kirklees, our social care and our NHS staff are working collaboratively about what that offer might look like. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> the same will be happening in Wakefield, the same will be happening in Calderdale. Um, but what what you might find is that the offer that they receive as Kerfleet's residents in a Wakefield practice for their NHS puts a different expectation on social care. Mm -hmm. So the Kirklees social care doesn't match what the 
Wakefield social care offer might yeah. be. Mm. So you end up with a bit of a disconnect. So the challenge to us is to make sure that we're doing cross cross boundary working, not only within wards in Kirklees, but actually outside the boundary mm. of Kirklees. Right. So I think the, nobody's going to go without care. It's just mm. that the care might be at risk of being fragmented because the same model isn't being applied in all of those mm. areas. Yeah. What you find is they get bounced between the two of them. So that is something that obviously you'll pick up. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. as best yeah. I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. So um, moving on to um, so we asked Collaborate, which is a, a company that has done a lot of work around sex working, to try and get a sense of particularly with partners because I think we've kind of made quite a strong commitment as a council that this is our one of our primary agendas, but. Um, how, how partners are um, responding to that and what their understanding of that was, a, was obviously something important we needed to find out because we're never going to make the difference we want to make if we just do it as one organisation. So they were asked to look at <clears throat> what people's understanding of it was, where we were currently and what were the barriers and opportunities to going forward. And this um, next slide is, is sort of... Um, a summary of that. Now I can provide you with more detail about their broader report but this is just a bit of a summary because I've got a lot of slides to go through today. But um, it was really interesting because actually um, the statutory organisations did, did seem to come from an organisation perspective, they came from a service perspective and they came from a we will do to people perspective. I mean I'm, I'm, being, I'm, being, I'm making a generalisation but that was largely the conclusion. If you were in the VCS, you were much more likely to think about people first, not about services, mm -hmm. which you would expect that to be mm -hmm. the case. So actually, the from and to is how we move from being an organisation to being part of a bigger system. So genuinely making decisions that are of benefit to the system, not just about the organisation that you happen to be in. And this isn't just the, for the council, this is about everyone. Um, so... Um, a collective effort and system leadership amongst that, even if it's not your organisation, it's a skill that we need to build. Um, how we move from services to people, which starts with people in the places I identify with, and then you work out the services implications, not starting with the service implications and, and try and squeeze that into what people, um, what people live and work in. Um, specifically for the council, actually, in terms of We've, we've always tried to do better as an organisation, but is there actually a point in which we say we need to be different? Because mm. we can continue to be better, but in a way that doesn't support this way of working. Or do we need to fundamentally change in order to do that? And then, I know we've talked a lot about doing to, um, not for. And, you know, we've talked about restorative practice. Um, it's really interesting listening to people and how they respond to this, because... The, the definition of that is kind of high support and a high challenge. Um, and actually, you know, if you were working restoratively, it wouldn't mean that everybody was happy all the time and everyone got what they wanted because we don't, we don't live in that world. But it's the ability to be able to say, um, actually, what do you want to make? To, how would this help you? And what are you going to do to be part of that solution? Rather than it just being a, right, Mrs. Jones, this is you on the computer, you can get this, this and not this and this. So it's just that nuanced difference in terms of the relationship. Um, and, you know, as I talk, we touched on earlier in terms of what we mean by community capacity, and people will have different, different definitions to me, but how are we harnessing that where it exists and how are we helping to create the conditions of that to grow? Okay? Um, so just moving on, um, the paper that came to Annual Council in May talked about um, the approach to place partnerships, which, which I've touched on and I'll come on to, but it also talked about how we wanted to, and we committed to set up ward and sub-ward partnerships. So that very much takes the points that have been raised about place and says it wouldn't be um, particularly good if we committed to working on geographies that made sense to people and then insisted on setting up a ward partnership because that made sense to us. Um, so actually we've committed to saying that whatever that, that place is for you and your communities, then we can help to support to put those um, partnerships in place. And those partnerships need to be genuinely you know, cross-sector, cross-system, and involve the communities themselves. 
and partly using the play standard tool engagement does give us an opportunity to get that sense of identity. And my rough calculations, and again, this is finger in the air, no, that's, that's my definition of calculation, is we could be looking at like 70 or 80 different identified places across Kirklees. You know, when we've got 23 wards, but actually in terms of what people genuinely identify with, I think you're talking a huge amount of different places. So how, you know, it'll be a really interesting challenge to see how that works out in terms of when we develop these, these ward or sub-ward partnerships and what that genuinely ends up meaning. Okay. Um, so um, apologies to um, corporate governance and audit colleagues because I know that you'll have seen some of this before but I've, I've kept it down to a couple of slides. So <clears throat> this is an attempt to say that, um, okay, we've got those places that people identify with and we've got wards but are there some issues that are better addressed at a different geography, a bit of a bigger geography? Um, so we've come up with these seven places which are based on demographics. Now, um, as with any population level analysis, you're never going to get a complete, completely perfect map because we don't have that. And Councillor Scott's point earlier about different streets within a ward can be extremely different. You're always going to have mm. um, diversity within that. Um, the part place partnership lead role has been established. And if you just move on, Carl. Um, and again, apologies for the small writing. What that does is just take through what those seven lead members have worked on as the way that they're going to be working. So how they take intelligence from the council and its partners about the place that they're, um, they're looking at and its issues in relation to mental health, which is, is the topic that's been chosen. How they work with the ward councillors um, to understand whether that actually means something or whether it's, it's, it doesn't make sense or doesn't resonate with them. And how can we build up that bottom-up intelligence rather than it being top-down. Um, how we then get a sense of what's there, what's the capacity, your point earlier, Councillor Scott, about what, what exists within those areas that could potentially meet those needs. How do we actually engage with communities more so that we can get a sense of what the solution that they want it to be rather than something that a service provider might determine. Um, and then essentially how as a collective group of ward councillors and your place lead member you feel confident in recommending through um, the cabinet member, for, which is obviously Councillor Scott, how this might get, um, get addressed going forward. So that's the proposal. Um, and obviously we're in this first year of it, so we will, as, as you know, um, said by a number of committees we've been to, we want to see how this is evaluated, how, what impact it has, and you know, if it is a model that we can take forward. And I, I guess as an organisation where we've got a level of, we want to try and make place-based working successful, what we're trying to do is look at it from different angles and see which ends up being the best way of doing this longer term. Can I just say for the point of the audio, the actual places will be Huddersfield North, Central, Rural, Cone Valley, Dewsbury, Spen Valley and Barley. So it's just because if people are tapping into this, they need to know what, what areas we're talking about. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next slide just kind of um, covers that framework in a little bit more detail, um, which I won't go through because I've kind of I've, I've talked about it. But I will just say that I think that um, what we've already... Um, identified as an early uh, need is a bit of a communications plan around what this work is, what it isn't, what it's doing, because obviously there's a lot of confusion and we want to make sure we get it right so that we have the best impact. So um, well, now we've got this agreed as a framework and signed off, signed off by the seven and they're getting on and working through it, we can work in the background on helping to sort of people to understand what it means. Okay. And move on again, thanks. So moving on to ward and sub-ward partnerships and, and how this framework is developing. So uh, again, um, we've said in that annual council paper that we, we need to have engagement for a basis of a plan. So I think um, we often, and I'll say we, um, do, do uh, create local, we've created locality plans, for example, in the past that have been based on um, sometimes what agencies believe are the issues within an area rather than actually genuinely something that is based on what people need. I'm not suggesting that's always been the case, but sometimes that has been. 
So I think it's quite clear in that report that we're saying that actually if you if if we are going to support um, a place a, sorry I'm getting confused now a ward or subward plan and a ward and subward partnership there needs to be some understanding that engagement has taken place with the community and I think that's a really important starting point because we're not starting from a you know one person wanting to do a thing and it's actually something that we've got buy in by the community then. Um, 15 wards have got a kind of ward partnership type of type arrangement. It may be called a ward forum, but it's 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 some arrangement where officers of the council are helping to support that ward, that ward or ward grouping to have conversations with different agencies and, and the community about how they can improve things. Um, or they have a parish and town council. Um, and we've got mechanisms by where we can plan uh, engagement and how we are going to respond to that. Because obviously the engagement is the one thing, but as an organisation and a system we need to be absolutely in a position to respond. Because I'm sure you will all tell me um, that it's very, very, very important to not over-promise and under-deliver when you're talking about people's expectations. Because mm. if people mm. are going to take the time to be part of an engagement programme and they identify issues that needs addressing, then if we don't then respond to that, then that's going to create a lot more problems than it does solutions. So key to this is, at the heart of this, is <coughs> councillors being informed about what's going on as well. Yeah. So it's not officer yeah. just on Just on the, the parish and town councils, so I can see how that will work in Merfield, because the town council covers the, the ward, mm. and similarly in, in Meltham, Meltham covers just the just part of um, Hanoi North. It won't work in the Kirk Burton Parish mm. Council because it sits across three wards. Mm, it and, and in Home Valley, I'm not sure how many wards it sits across, it's certainly mm. one and a half. Right. Um, and then Denby Dale is just Denby Dale, isn't yes. it? Yeah. So it might work in Denby Dale, Merfield and Meltham. Yeah, but I think Home Valley and Kirk Burton, yeah. the Parish Council isn't a suitable um, mechanism for doing that local engagement. No, it's not. I mean, Kirk Burton's is just huge. It's that's a right. geographic area. The intelligence yeah. you have is excellent. <clears throat> that's why ward councillors have got to be at the heart of this with citizens mm. so that you get a better understanding. And I guess it's all, it's all about in, in, in those sort of circumstances, I suppose it may, it may be just about flipping that round. I mean, so if we if we have engagement of the type that you've done in Shepley, in Wilder and Shelley, and, and, that's, and that features in the other wards that come within the purview of that parish, it's almost feeding that up, and that mm. might become a parish plan in the same way that... It'll never, it'll never be a parish plan. No. Mm. No, because you're sitting across, you're sitting across three, three Kirkby's yep. wards, and it's all of Kirk Burton ward, it's roughly half of Almondbury ward, well, yeah, almost, almost. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, and okay. it's a tiny bit of Dalton ward. And, and plus the Dalton ward council is on parish councils either, which is a, which would also be important. So that's about the well, yeah. yeah. There's only one of you in There's only one of me in Almondbury, yeah. 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 So, so it's, two, no, but that's two about three relationships three as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. So, yeah. Yeah. so I just don't... Uh, if you're thinking parish council is a solution, and I've, believe me, I've been on the parish council since 1999, it is not the solution. No, it's really not. I agree, I agree with that. It's not okay. I think, I think partly by putting it on is, is an acknowledgement that there is those, it's different. they exist, it's but I'm not entirely sure how yeah. we're so, going to work yeah. through that relationship. Yeah. Just going back to the Democracy <coughs> Commission and just stepping mm. aside from this agenda item, it's one of the things I've asked we need to talk about it's is parish councils mm. and how we, how we better align ourselves with working with parish councils mm -hmm. and whether those parish councils are fit for purpose in terms of representing the communities for the area mm -hmm. that they cover. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, just mm. to add to that, I think Sorry. Uh, there's, I agree with Johnny that they're not the answer, but there is a lot of potential that some tax, I feel like, Kirkley, they, I feel like we don't, parish councils sit very separate with Kirkley's, and I'm on the middle of parish council, and at our meetings you'll have members who just sort of laugh that we, they, they <coughs> feel Kirkley's is completely distinct from them, we feel too far away, and that's sort of part of the, the place issue that John's mentioned about the identity and things like that. Um, so I, th I feel like there's a lot that we could do. It's not like I can have the whole answer, there's a lot that we could do. And as part of, like you mentioned in the slides earlier, it's got to be an ongoing conversation, building that relationship and getting mm. the most out of that community, yeah. community capacity. Because a lot of those volunteers who are that community capacity are on parish councils. 
and we just have to develop that relationship yeah. a bit better. I think I think with regards to Kurt Burton, I think we 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 uh, we were really well connected, um, but I think that connection isn't as um, pronounced um, or as well defined as it was. And I think that again, like Will just said, I think we could do with build. We need to build on that and reach out to the communities more in whichever way we can through the I parish just, council. I, I just, people don't recognise Kurt Burton Parish Council as being a place. <coughs> it's too vast. Well, that's intelligence that you can yeah. feed into this. Yeah. I mean, I would say, I would say that I think that varies from because in my from uh, from my point, I think I uh, my experience, I would say, Kirk, people in Kirk Eaton definitely know recognise Kirkburn Parish Council as as I would say people in Lepton do as well, but it may be different in Sheffield. No, so what I mean is, they don't recognise the, the whole of the area being one, one place. Pa- one place. Their villages, they're independent. They have different needs. They well, they are served yeah. in different but that's ways. That's something we can address. I think that's easy. I think it's just too big. Yeah. Are we looking at this as an assumption from the circles that we move in when we're talking about the wider community? Do they actually care? That's my whole point. They don't. Do they actually? Care? That's my whole point. They don't so identify it's about with it. What, they identify they with dip in place. and out of what affects them. Mm. So it's about stripping it back, and your intelligence will be part of the journey that the community can, you know, dip in and say. Perhaps it's actually when there's an engagement part of this and there's there's an action planning part of this and there there may be parts, won't there, in terms of some of the emerging actions that come from some of those sub-board engagements that may well be best addressed in partnership with the parish in terms of whatever that thing is and that's the conversation, I guess, isn't it? In some of those instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the bigger thing is the the, con- the strategic relationship with parish councils on the, the, that you've alluded so to. My, yeah. my, my fundamental is you've got a huge, big, vast geographic area yeah. that's a parish council that is far too big to act. You, you can't get from you can't get people to transport from one side to the other. There is no sense that this is one community, mm. and we're talking about place which is a sense of where they live and a community. Mm. And all the parish council is at the moment is a series of communities all, all shoved together. Can I just suggest why? I think that's because it's confusing because it's called Kirk Burton Parish Council, whereas Home Va- I mean Home Valley is Home Valley, it's a valley. It's not referring to one specific village in that area. And I think I think it is quite confusing for people, apart from everything else. I because think people just yeah. think it it's, it means Kirk Burton. So is yeah. as a whole that part we'll let Rachel continue. But that part, John, you did say for it to be a gender item yeah, to come to the Democracy yeah. Commission. Yeah. So can we part that, allow Rachel to continue with the presentation, but it's not to say that we're not going to concentrate and look at yeah. areas where yeah. John's saying. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think there's a level of <coughs> clocking things for completeness, you know, that <coughs> we know they exist and so we can't ignore them, but we're not quite sure what the best way of dealing with them is. Mm. <coughs> this is the foundation. <laughs> So just in terms of the process we've tried to articulate in relation to the, the system engagement that we're doing, so this will be familiar to some of you. So you know the question of how good is our place, we, we engage with the community using the place standard, how we then create some action planning that suggests there's something that we can do together to make a difference, and I mean together across the multi-agency but with the community themselves. Going out and checking out how are we doing, are we delivering on these things, are people doing what they said they were going to do, is there more we can do, are there more problems that have arisen or more capacity that's arisen that we can capitalise on. And then just keep re-engaging with people to see whether people's perceptions of their place and how their place feels to them have moved on. And I think that's, hopefully, if that can become something that we stick to, we'll end up with some really rich intelligence about how people feel about the places that they live in. Um, and so, obviously, we've talked about this, um, and just, I think, the important point, which is the bottom one here, is we've set up a cross-partnership you know, engagement reference group, because actually, um, you know, from a personal perspective, it can be frustrating when um, services go out and ask people things, and they've not even understood when those people have been asked about something only five minutes previously. Um, and actually what intelligence do we already know about those areas. So this it, group has been both across council and with CCG, Locala and other colleagues that we've got a sense of 
actually what are people trying to achieve? Are we comfortable that it aligns with a set of principles that actually supports um, that, <coughs> what we want to do? So aligning to what we've done through the Democracy Commission. And actually we use the place standard if that's the right tool to use. Now it might not be. There's, you know, there's engagement that needs to happen about very specific things that the place standard wouldn't be used for. But actually if people have already identified that they're all really unhappy about something within their area and then we want to go and ask something specific about it. It's always worth being armed with that information first than going in cold. So for me, this is about making sure that that reference group gives that ownership across the organisation to say, we're not just going to go out and ask people about apples one week, pears the next week, whatever, because that can sometimes be what happens. And if we can get that multi-agency, that would be even better because you find that people just get consultation fatigue. Um, also, if it is just asking questions without any expectations of what's going to be made, what difference is going to be made, you'll end up with just people feeling like they're just receiving things, not being part mm. of the solution. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, the New Citizenship Project is, is an, uh, uh, an agency that's been really interested in the Democracy Commission work that, that Kirkley's have done. Um, what they've been helping us do as part of them developing their offer uh, as, a, as an organisation out there is to try and get a narrative that actually changes our relationship with citizens that, that essentially will help solve that slide where I put all that officer speak and it didn't really give us an answer. Um, and we've used two wards, Fieldhead and Ashbrow, which um, we've just got the results which we'll be we're talking through with um, Councillor Scott in terms of her steer on those initial findings. But we're hoping that that will be the cultural change that we need um, in terms of how that will uh, need to change across the organisation and help staff work in different ways um, so that actually we're not just trying to do a structural solution to this, we're actually going to change the culture as, as well. I might be, a bit, be being a bit daft here, but where's the other hand? Yeah. Just, just Google it. Oh, is it person yeah, there? Yeah, oh, right. <laughs> the one just be there. I'm trying to do it on the slide. <laughs> See you rural people. <laughs> I mean, without giving too much of the excitement away. Three hundred miles away. <laughs> one of the things I really like about this is they very much talk about actually, you know, how do we get senior leaders to walk the talk by being out there with frontline staff more? How do we get, um, how do we get people to become part of conversations about them more? And how do we create the circumstances for that to happen? So it almost takes us into the kind of next phase of um, of the Democracy Commission work and, and and even things like learning from some of the private companies who've done things like you know senior leaders adopting a branch of a store and, and actually how can we adopt places as leaders across the organisation and feel like we know more about them a bit more. So it's much more tangible practical things that I think will really help to support place based working. Okay? I'm nearly done, I'm sorry I feel like I've been talking for hours. Um, so the place standard, just to, to update you on that, we've, we've delivered engagements in fa eight neighbourhoods so far, which cover five wards, and um, about nearly 1,800 citizens have been engaged in that. Uh, we've got it planned for 19 areas, um, which includes 11 wards. Um, some of them are council-led, so councillors have come in and asked for this, um, which interestingly includes a town council. Um, some have been community led where community have wanted to take a, a lead and, and develop some kind of engagement or service led so for example we've done some stuff about particular KNH estates where they've wanted to ask some questions so we've used the tool and actually we're all quite comfortable that the tool can be used in any of those ways because um, actually it's, it, it's slightly opportunistic as much as it is planned which is why I, I always steer clear from the word rollout because it implies a programme of, of as doing to and again, it's not really in keeping with what we're saying we want to achieve from it. Um, we're also using it around the town centre because I think that's a really good example of where people might have a view on a blueprint, which is a very physical, practical thing. But actually, in order to create a family-friendly town centre, getting a sense of what's important to people will help to make sure that how the blueprint is delivered might be uh, better for the communities that use the town centre. So we'll see how that marries up when we get the so engagement I, back. So I did um, I did a session with AGK in the town centre 
um, last week. Um, so I, there, was, there was about 25 people there, may, mainly um, mature women. There was a few blokes, but they didn't seem to get a word in edgeways. Um, <laughs> and I should say, it, 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 was, it was difficult to control, because uh, they all had a lot of thoughts. My one, my one worry about it, though, was it was very, very difficult to keep them focused on the town centre because they were talking about their experiences yeah. and they came from all over Huddersfield. Mm. Um, so even things like, things you would think of straightforward, like uh, public transport, things like that, they were talking about the public transport they get from their Where community. They yeah. In, so we just need to be careful with the results of the place standard. Mm -hmm. that, um, it, it, I think it's very difficult to use place standard in, in that way for the town centre, and unless you're very, very, very focused on on the discussions you're having, I think it was, it was really quite difficult. Um, I think you're absolutely a, right, John. It was quite interesting. Though. Yeah, it's about um, managing expectations as well, because yeah. quite a lot of the town centre is about antisocial behaviour, crime, and police, and it's we can't influence that resource. We can have the conversation. But it takes that partnership working in order, mm -hmm. hopefully, that they will invest in our town centres. So it's about managing that. But you're absolutely right, it was all Did you want to say anything? That, that's useful, actually. I think that, because yeah. again, this is sometimes where we can we're, all, we're in that kind of suck in it and see it out of face. But actually, yeah. quite right, what yeah. people, how they will respond will be what how they feel they're identifying themselves as, isn't yeah. it? Like yeah. Just because they're in the town yeah. centre doesn't mean to say they see themselves as a town centre. So we'll see, yeah. see mm -hmm. what the results come back with, with that. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, we've trained over 200 people already in terms of delivering and well doing the place times tour, mm -hmm. which is huge, actually. Um, well done. In not a too long period of time. No. Okay, I've got two more slides you'd be pleased to know. So just to, in terms of creating the conditions of success, and I, I talked a little bit at the start about the sort of strategic coordination and how as an organisation and a partnership we're managing staff better in this space. So I've ha I had an away morning with the, my three strategic director colleagues about what the operating model might be for our staff. And I think we're in a place where we're all fairly comfortable with what that might look like, but I just need to get final sign off. Um, but what's really clear to me is that one of the biggest risks as an organisation, never mind a system, is that I go from having siloed services to four siloed place-based working things. And you actually just don't end up getting any benefit from that. So what I want to be able to do is to ensure that corporately there's a kind of holding the ring on place-based working so that we can make sure that um, people are working in the right way, that they're working collaboratively amongst the different groups, but also that we've got, we're not then developing policies that cut across that ambition because sometimes you can, at risk of having some of those, I think it's the point Councillor Taylor made earlier, you can have an all singing, all dancing strategy at the top of the shop that actually when you translate that into place based action looks very different to what that strategy said. So how do we make the strategies nuanced enough that they reflect local situations and intelligence, not just a, you will do X, Y, and Z, which can sometimes be the case. Mm. So we've got that going on at the moment. So I'm hoping to do a series of staff engagement sessions in September that will help staff to understand what working in this new way means. <clears throat> and then finally, just moving on to next steps then. So, as you can see, and again, I'd be interested for your comments and feedback, um, we've got quite a lot of pieces of a jigsaw that I've tried to go through a little bit whistle-stop today to articulate all the different bits of the programme that is place-based working. What I absolutely need to be able to do is define that programme in a way that's meaningful, because at the moment it, it isn't there yet in terms of the different areas. And obviously we've been focusing on things like getting the place, lead, um, place partnership lead member stuff through, um, we've got the place standard engagement going on, we've got stuff in the background about how we're going to manage staff. It's all kind of one big um, collection of activities to try and hopefully get us to the place we want to be. We absolutely need, it, need to work on the governance arrangements because there's been different governance arrangements for different bits of this. So I absolutely need to put that as a priority. Um, <clears throat> Carl and I will be visiting each of the political groups over the next six weeks. I think we've got dates in now for everyone to talk about the programme and get some feedback and challenge, which will be helpful. Has it been to leading members already, this? 
To be honest, bits of it have been. I think that's right. Okay. Times. So now it's time to take it to a group. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. take yeah. it to a yeah. group. I've seen yeah. all of it through leading members, but not all together in one yeah. meeting. Right. Okay. Oh. So it's, it's definitely for groups now. Yeah. And and you know, in hindsight, sometimes if you were being a purist, you'd start from somewhere different and work work mm -hmm. it through in a different way. But we are where we are, and we've got exactly. it now. But I, the mm -hmm. important thing is how we get the clear mm -hmm. governance develop a communication plan around it so that people are really clear about how all these activities take us towards the outcome of place-based mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. and people understand it effectively. Mm -hmm. okay. Just on that last point about communication plan, um, one thing that would be really valuable to put in there is some stories and some examples of where it's been successful. Mm -hmm. So that, Because you can communicate as much as you like, but mm -hmm. if you can bring it to life with a little story mm -hmm. about this happened in this community, and as a result, we did X, Y, Z, and everybody's really happy now. <laughs> is that an opportunity? Is that an opportunity to use the democracy site? Because quite a lot of the things that have been going on, it is getting posted on there, isn't it? You let it settle. Well, I think that's coming back to the new citizenship stuff. That's the sort of thing they push back towards. That actually, if you're doing this stuff. Instead of you, the organisation, telling the story, get the get the people who've done it and the communities to tell their story because it's a much more powerful story. Than it's like, it's like who's telling it? It's like the like thing I said at council when we had the corporate plan and we had wonderful stories in there of members of staff. Mm. And I said, well, it would be nice if we had the end users in there as well as the residents yeah, yeah. Um, mm. telling their stories. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I would agree, absolutely. Okay. Okay, is that okay? I've, um, yeah. Can I can I just to... thank you for the time that you've taken on this, Rachel? Mm -hmm. It's really comprehensive, and it yeah. and it's a long time coming. But obviously, we're laying the foundations of going in a new direction, which I think everybody should feed into. Mm -hmm. If there's any other queries, if you want to go back to myself, Rachel, you know, or if you want to set up an, uh, an extra item on yeah. our agenda okay, to do with this, but um, okay. can I just say, Councillor Yusra has saying did turn up. Um, <laughs> Uh, so she she slipped into the room. So she is here I this morning. No, it's fine. Do it's absolutely something fine. Very urgent about no, housing. no, it's uh, it's uh, it's for audio, so that okay. everybody knew you were present. So thank you very much. The date and the time of the next meeting is going to be Monday, the thirtieth of September, eleven a.m. to twelve thirty, and it'll be in the leadership uh, room again. Is the big three? Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks for your attendance. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rich.